Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and another Hammer Productions Night. Tonight, I will be reviewing The Snorkel, released in 1958. The Snorkel stars Peter Van Eck, Betta St. John, Mandy Miller, Gregore Oslin, William Franklin, Marie Burke, and Robert Ruddy. The Snorkel was directed by Guy Green. Now this one was written by Anthony Dawson, Peter Myers, and Jimmy Sangster. Now this is one of those films where um, we've heard the statement, uh, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, in this case, uh, don't judge a film by its title. Uh, this film has a ridiculously stupid title with the snorkel. Um, but if you were to judge it because of that stupid title, you would be very, very mistaken. Because this is a well-written, well-directed masterpiece from Hammer Films. Peter Van Eck plays uh, Paul Decker, a character who marries this woman and then kills her. And apparently it might not be the first time he's done this. And it's a, he has a very unique way of killing the woman or the women. Um, so he basically, the reason the title is called The Snorkel is um, there is a device you can use when snorkeling. In case you don't know, that's what a snorkel is. It's a, it goes over your face, almost like a diving um, mask and everything. But this one has an area where you can breathe. It has a little thing that goes up to where you can just go under the water and you're able to breathe through the tubing that goes up to the top of the water. So you could stay under the water and still breathe, but be completely underwater and submerged um, for a long, long time with this snorkel. And he uses this by connecting a um, air supply into the top of the snorkel. Um, and setting it up under the floorboard in the place where he's living. And he turns on the gas after knocking out his wife, um, dragging her and knocking her out. She's unconscious on the couch. And he fills the room with this gas while he is under the floorboard, breathing, able to breathe air through that snorkel and the gas does not affect him. Meanwhile, she is above and is dying from the gas. Of course, the next morning, um, he stays in there the whole night under the floorboard. And the next morning, the maid comes in and finds the body and uh, ends up realizing that the room is filled with gas. And it is ruled a suicide because he's left a note and all the windows and doors were taped up. When the crime scene is finally cleared, body is taken away and everybody is left. Paul comes out, takes off his little snorkeling outfit that he had on, um, hides everything back under the floorboard where he had it. Um, and gets dressed up like he just arrived into the area and pretends that he knows nothing about what happened and just is waiting for someone to come and inform him that his wife is dead. But there is a little bit of a glitch in his little plan here, though, because... 
His wife's daughter, Candy Brown, played by Mandy Miller, immediately suspects foul play. Um, he, she has a uh, friend of the family that that named Jean Edwards, played by Betta St. John, who um, stays with the girl and takes her places and everything when she's not with her mom and everything. Um, and no one, not even Jean, believes. There's a police inspector played by uh, Grigore Oslin. Um, there is a... Uh, um, another um, investigator um, named Wilson, played by William Franklin. No one believes her. They think that she is lashing out and she's not willing to accept the truth. Um, but she is adamant and is determined to prove that Paul is a murderer. And of course, that leads to uh, Paul um, seeing her as a threat and deciding he needs to get rid of her as well. And he tries it multiple times throughout the movie, and it is just... It is such a good story, and it is so well acted. Um, Peter Van Eck, as Paul, is a very charming person. So you can buy into the fact that some of these people don't believe it. Um, I didn't buy into the fact that why Jean would just be so brought in by him and everything and not believe Candy um, because she is with Candy all the time. Um, she should have been more supportive, I think, in the story. Um, but that's a minor um, quibble with it. But and Mandy Miller, um, as a, as a young actress playing Candy, she is incredible. I just, I just I enjoyed her performance. She is so likable in this role. You immediately attach to her, and you have already seen what Peter von X Paul has done. So you already know he's an asshole, and you are just hoping and praying that this girl can prove him to be this uh, killer. And, you know, and, you know, it, it comes to a really satisfying conclusion by the end of this film. And uh, Guy Green directed a perfect um, film in many respects. Like I said, the only qualm I have is that Jean, um, Betta St. John's character, does not uh, trust in Candy. Um, just because she's a young girl, that doesn't mean she's not a smart girl. Um, but, yeah, it it is... If you have not seen the film, just because, of, you know, maybe you saw the title and you're like, oh, how, what a stupid movie this must be. Um, do not judge this film by the goofiness of the title, The Snorkel. This is a very well-written, very well-directed, very well-acted film. And uh, I think it should have uh, led um, Man Mandy Miller into being a bigger actress. But unfortunately, like a lot of these um, young actresses in these films and everything... She didn't do much um, after this, unfortunately. Um, but my final review of The Snorkel from 1958, I am going to give this incredible film, I am going to give this film a 9.7 out of 10. This is almost a perfect film. Like I said, the only issue I really have with it is those those moments where Betta St. John's Jean, I think, should have been more understanding and believing of um, Candy in there. 
But uh, other than that, this, this film is just a great, great master class in um, psychological thrillers. And uh, I can't recommend it enough. But have you seen this film? If so, do you agree with my review? Do you disagree? Let me know in those comments down below. And, as usual, if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to click that bell icon so you can be more notified about future videos just like this one. And while you're by the subscribe button, click that join button and become a Dark Knight fan. Well, that's it for another Hammer Productions Night. If you missed last week's Hammer Productions Night, check out the link up here to get caught up on that one. Or if you missed any of the other Hammer Productions Night, be sure and check out the playlist right here to get caught up on any of them that you have missed.